Hello, everybody. I'm Jefferson Mendoza reporting live here at the Philippine Consulate General in Hong Kong. Pride Month is in June, and this month there is many countries in the world that are celebrating the diversity of the LGBT communities. To talk more about the current situation here in Hong Kong, we have Dr. Brenda Lege. She is the lecturer at the University of Hong Kong. So, Dr. Brenda, welcome. Well, thank you, thank you, and hi to everyone who's watching. All right, good. So that being said, um, you had the chance to talk to an audience earlier. It is yeah. the first time to have this program at the Philippine yeah. Consulate General. What is the message that you wanted to tell the audience? Um, it's very important uh, for me, I mean, like having grown up in the Philippines, and I know very well, you know, the, the experiences and the narratives of LGBTQI people in the Philippines. I think it's about time that um, um, we have this kind of forum, you know, where and we get to talk about issues, narratives, concepts, at least on the basic level, um, on about LGBT, and it it opens avenues, you know, uh, in, it reframes the minds of of Filipinos, and which I think we need to, because for a long time it's a taboo. Um, um, to talk about it back home. Um, maybe people might have this impression that we are very visible, you know, we were able to, we managed to insert ourselves uh, in the social milieu, but still it's kind of taboo to talk about the particular issues and narratives concerning LGBTQI people. I was, uh, I had the chance to attend the, uh, the forum itself. It's quite lively just to let you know, so perhaps next year the yes. Philippine Consulate will be kind enough to have another session or maybe anytime soon. Anytime soon. Yes. The next question I wanted to ask is about you. You are you identify yourself as a transgender woman. Yes. How has your identity shaped you throughout the past year? Ah, uh, yeah. Um, transgender woman or transpenine. We're very proud, you know, to use the word transpenine. Our organization, Strap, the Society of Transsexual Women of the Philippines. So we coined this term. We were, I think, the first to use the word transpenine almost 10 years ago. Um, um, I think I learn new things each and every time, you know. Um, and I think that's what life is. I believe all of us are inherently gender fluid or sexually fluid, you know, and somehow we learn things along the way and we become comfortable somewhere. Um, I think in my case, um, I learn through others. I, I learn through information. Um, um, it's a good thing that there is social media now, you know, we get to learn the narratives, you know, of people from other countries and other places. Um, and I can learn from them. And in fact, I can reshape my own ideas about my own gender expressions through others. Yeah. All right. So you've learned a lot, but some people unfortunately have different misconceptions, mm. especially in the Philippines, for yes. instance, among Filipino communities. What is one misconception that Filipinos have of a trans pinai? I think they think uh, trans pinais or transgender people are, are variants of uh, gay men who went to Japan as performers and then would go to Thailand to actually have a gender transition and surgeries, you know, um, like everything, and then would go back to the Philippines and they look more feminine. So they would be called transsexuals years ago and now they would be called transgenders, but that's what they think. They think if all of us undergo surgeries, but the thing is not all trans people even consider surgeries, not all trans people want to do surgeries, and not all people who underwent surgeries actually identify themselves as transgender, you know. So I think in general, if you identify as a gender away from what you were assigned at, at birth, you can be considered as transgender. You know, uh, one of the things you had said earlier in the forum or that conversation that you had when you were talking about, yeah. you know, I was assigned as a male. Yes. You, you, that term you forgot. Now, let me ask this question though. Mm -hmm. How has your life, is? how different is it here living in Hong Kong compared to the days you were living in the Philippines? Um, I think uh, there are good days and bad days in both places. I think here in in, in Hong Kong, uh, there's a bit of restriction somehow because uh, there's lack of visibility of LGBT, particularly trans people. So it's just so hard to be so um, um, lively, you know, here. But the good thing about um, living here is they're more naive, I think, you know, on, on, on the flip side of that, that um, lack of visibility. They're more naive, so you can be yourself in, anytime. In the Philippines, um, we can be very authentic to our gender expressions, but the problem is because of the lack of laws, we are not protected by laws. The absence of laws, the pathologization of the Catholic Church of, of, of diverse identities can be a problem for us. So uh, we don't have anti-discrimination law up until now, which is a big problem. There are municipalities, around 11 to 14 municipalities in the Philippines with 
anti-discrimination ordinances, but just municipalities or cities, not the whole country. So that's a problem. I doubt that we will have a gender recognition law anytime soon, but we need that. So I cannot change my gender. Um, I can change my gender here, um, um, but I need to undergo surgery, which is also a problem. Not all trans people consider transitioning. So I can, however, let's say, change my gender if I go to another country, like let's say Australia or Argentina or the UK. So if if that is for someone who would who's willing to just go through everything to transition his or her gender on paper, but I hope we don't need to do that. So in Hong Kong, I think there's still a long way to go. There is a pending talk on uh, gender recognition. There are cases right now that's being heard. The QT case is a pending case of a a local transgender person here. If that case wins, then it can be an additional to the W case that was decided on almost three years ago or four years ago. And then there's uh, also the marriage or the sexual, uh, I'm sorry, same-sex marriage um, um, issues in Hong Kong, which is also a problem, which is also a problem in the Philippines. You can be in open relationships. You can be in a relationship that can be officiated by one of the churches that we have there, the MCC, but you cannot be legally recognized. So I think these are some of the prevailing problems. Absolutely. Well, one of this, in one of your slides, you had mentioned about certain issues. We have, obviously, religion issue. We also have that anti-discrimination, which is still pending. Yeah. And you had mentioned, I think I researched about that. It was, in, I think it was proposed in early 2000s, and yes. we're already 2017. So yeah. mind you about the, just the, the road towards yeah. getting this kind of protection. Now, I want to ask about this situation that happened in 2014 with the trans woman, trans penai Jennifer Laude. She mm. was murdered in the Philippines, and that's how uh, Dr. Brenda Lega and I got the chance to meet. Yes. So that being said, three years later, mm -hmm. 2017 in April, the killer was is sent to jail, mm -hmm. but not for murder, but more for homicide, according to the Longapo yeah. Trial Court Justice. What about you? Though I, I'm, I'm curious and I'm, I want to know more about, do you ever f uh, fear about your life, whether you're in Hong Kong or in the Philippines? Yes, constantly. Well, well, nearly constantly, um, especially if I go out on dates. You know, sometimes one of the first things that I think about is um, when will I get killed, you know? But I, I, I'm not sure if I'm the only one. I think there are a few other trans women who also feel the same way. Um, so trans people are very vulnerable, you know, to, to, to being harmed because we're just, because we're different. Um, in the Philippines, there are many undocumented, apart from documented cases of uh, murders. Uh, before, there's this uh, report that's uh, um, furnished by the Philippine um, Hate Crime Group. You know, and I think um, I'm, I don't think that they're continuing with that, but that was really helpful. But the problem there is the tracking of the identities. You know, um, some there were some um, um, heinous crimes, actually many heinous crimes, uh, perpetrated uh, against LGBT, especially trans people. And um, when the the sad part is when you read the reactions of people on social in social media, like on Facebook or YouTube or you know Twitter, it's the, the reactions are actually worse than the murder, you know, the way that they regendered you, you know, like Jennifer Laude was regendered, you know, she identifies as a woman, she identifies as Jennifer, she will be reverted back to the name given to her at her birth, she will be re uh, described as um, a man, a W is the placitous man, you know, who wanted to, to get laid, that's why she pretended to be a woman, the way that they also changed the, the he to sh the, the, the she to he, you know, and all that. And the thing is, she's already murdered. She was murdered heinously, for those who don't know how she was killed. And that decision was really bad, you know. I mean, like, um, a Pemberton was, is definitely um, 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 a, a murderer and a psychotic murderer at that point because that's such an, a good example of hate crime. You know, a trans panic was an excuse because I really even doubt that he didn't know. Um, it's, it's kind of, um, I think Jennifer is the kind of uh, trans woman who would declare her, her identity. There you have it, everyone. So Jennifer Laude died at 26, and uh, I believe uh, according to you know, reports that he, or she, excuse me, she, her, her, her face was submerged in the toilet bowl. Smashed. Yeah. Smashed, and there then, you go. Yeah. Okay, so that was definitely a heinous, heinous crime, mm -hmm. but unfortunately, as you, you might have known, there is no such thing as a lot of uh, anti demonstration law within the, across the country. Now, moving forward, forward on another topic or another tomorrow is uh, tonight June 12 is considered to be Philippine Independence Day I'd like to ask you Dr. Alegre uh, the definition of a woman a Filipina woman what is it is it today 
Well, hopefully a, a, a Filipino woman or a woman in general today is someone who knows herself and who knows her rights and lives within, um, you know, um, uh, her, her comfort, who is empowered, you know, who will not let someone define and dictate who and what she is, who she is. Uh, I think if you are still a woman who's trapped by expectations of society, especially Philippine society, then if it's independent, it's not just tomorrow, but every day you have to emancipate yourself, you know. So just be true to who you are. And then all the LGBTQI people out there in the Philippines or elsewhere, um, every day should be Independence Day, you know. Um, emancipate yourselves. Uh, I, I mean, you ha we have the nascent right to self-identification and self-determination. The Jogjakarta Principles was actually um, drafted 10 years ago. And just a couple of months ago, the Jogjakarta team went to Thailand to, to celebrate, to commemorate, and once more to look into issues concerning people's identities and what have transpired in the last 10 years, and there have been some progress. But to those of you who, who are still trapped, you know, in their own, um, in their societies, and emancipate yourself. Just be independent. We're born free. Thank you, Dr. Brenda Alegre. That is a long answer, but very <laughs> good answer, that being said. So, Dr. Brenda Alegre, who is a lecturer at the University of Hong Kong, how can people reach you? Um, email uh, brendara at hku.hk. You can also follow me in, uh, on Facebook, Brenda Allegra. Thank you. So if you enjoyed this video, kindly share, like, and even write comments down below. So I'm Jefferson Mendoza reporting live at the Philippine Consulate General in Hong Kong.